This year's Manx Grand Prix is a really special one. The event is celebrating its 100th birthday and what a century it's been. So what was happening back in 1923? Over in Sicily, Mount Etna was erupting. The Aussies had started work on Sydney Harbour Bridge and in France on four wheels, it was the first 24 hours of Le Mans. I've got my usual wingman with me, TT winner Cam Donald, all the way over from Oz. Uh, actually, did you get that bridge finished in the end? Didn't finish it myself, but the job did get done, <laughs> I believe. But back here at the Isle of Man, the first ever Manx amateur road races were held. Victory was taken by Les Randalls at an average speed of 52 miles per hour. Over the next century, the results would read like a roll of honour for the great and the good of British motorcycle racing. In 1930, the name was changed to the Manx Grand Prix, and it hasn't looked back since. The Manx has helped produce some of the greatest names in road racing. By the time Crusher White broke the 80 miles an hour barrier, more classes were being added. Progress of all kinds was interrupted by world events. Jeff Duke won the senior Manx Grand Prix and the senior TT a year later, setting a benchmark for riders like Bob McIntyre, Phil Reed, Charlie Williams and Robert Dunlop. The long-awaited first home win was a doubleheader. Derek Ennett took the junior and George Costain the senior. Nigel Rollison's victory for Yamaha was the first by a foreign maker and the first by a two-stroke. Phil Haslam recorded the first 100 mile per hour lap. The lightweight was won by Dave Hickman, the father of the even faster Peter. Foggy won the newcomers. A year later, a TT, followed by four World Superbike crowns. Philip McCallan took two wins at record pace and became a multiple TT winner thereafter. The first ladies to race at the Manx were Gloria Clark, Liz Skinner and Hilary Musson. 30 years later, Carolyn Sells became the first female winner of a solo race. TT winners aren't allowed back to the Manx, but can appear in classic races. Mountain King Joey Dunlop finished second. Local winner Tony Duncan is now Chief Travelling Marshal, a different way to graduate from the event. Milky Quail took another home win, setting a lap record that lasted 20 years. Ian Hutchinson won the newcomer's race. We all know what he did next. I had some problems with the helmet in the morning and uh, pulled in and then went out from a standing start and did 114, so... Three years later, Michael Dunlop became another rider to make his mark at the Manx, before going on to win 25 TTs and counting. You'd won at the Manx Grand Prix, what's your next step regarding the Art of Man? I'll be back to the TT next year, 600 to 1000, so... In 2019, local rider Nathan Harrison dominated and is now a factory rider at Honda with none other than TT legend John McGuinness as a teammate. And John will be riding again this week. And last year, Rob Hodson won the classic superbike race and Stephen Smith taking the senior Manx Grand Prix win. They're pushing these lightweight machines. Oh, oh, oh. How close do you want your racing? 
Brown goes through to take the win. One hundredth of a second over Jamie Williams, he's in second. Lopez is in third. Francesco Coringa takes the check and flag. This is fine with Ian Locker. They're riding on board with David McConaughey. Stephen Smith will win the Senior Max Grand Prix. We're riding on board with Paul Jordan. Craig Neve, only three tenths of a second ahead of Michael Dunlop. We're on board with Brian McCormack. The Kawasaki's got a little more, more speed. <laughs> oh, and here they go again, Cap. Oh. A smoke out of the back of Nathan Harrison, my goodness. So here comes Rob Hodgson, it's going to be his win. He wins. The 99 not out. Who will win in this centenary year? There's five races at this year's event with three featuring in today's program. And first, it's the Carol Nash Classic Senior Manx Grand Prix. It's a fantastic lineup for this race with Dunlop, Harrison and Hillier all set to go off the start line and a certain John McGuinness, who I caught up with earlier. <laughs> John, it's so good to speak to you again. You're always so busy. Are you having a great 2023 so far? In general, yeah. Well, the whole of 2023. Yeah, it's going absolutely brilliant. Really, really great. I'm really, really enjoying every part of it. We've been testing in Spain with the Honda team. Been to Goodwood, Festival of Speed, Formula One, MotoGP. And here we are at the Manx Grand Prix. So, uh, yeah, all the boxes are getting ticked. We all know how much you love the Isle of Man and how much you love the TT, but what does the Manx Grand Prix mean to you as well? It's funny, you know, when I, when I was growing up, I used to watch the Manx, uh, I used to watch the TET. I've never competed in the Manx Grand Prix. I never, and I, I went straight to the TT in 1996, but I know there's been some amazing riders come from the Manx, you know, noticeably, I suppose, Michael Dunlop, who now is the second most successful TT rider. There's so many riders come from the Manx, and uh, it's a great breeding ground for, for TT riders. Yeah, and now you're here competing in the Senior Classic race on the Winfield pattern once again. What keeps bringing you back? So I want to win it. I want to win it again. <laughs> it's been frustrating. We've had a, it's weird. We've, we've been so we won practice every year. It's a great bike. It's a lovely little bike to ride. I mean, uh, and it's probably the best bike on the track. It's the most successful bike on the track. You know, the, I, I have the lap record on the bike from 2016. I had a great race with Dean Harrison. And, you know, risking everything really for nothing, but just the enjoyment and uh, the fun part of it is great. Like you say, you've had a lot of success on this bike, three wins, but unfortunately last year you had some mechanical issues. So what do you think you and the team can achieve on this bike for this year? I just want to repay Roger and the team with the result. Uh, it's going to be tough. Mike Brown's going really, really fast on this Norton. Uh, Dean Harrison's going really fast on the single Norton. They have a major advantage over us. They don't have to stop for fuel. I have to stop for fuel, mandatory on lap two. Uh, so I have to gain quite a bit of time on them to be ahead of them. At the end of the day, I want to win the race as much as anybody. And uh, the bike's definitely capable of winning, just whether I'm good enough on the day. You know, I competed in the 100th TT in 2007. I'm, getting, I'm you know, competing in the 100th Max Grand Prix in 2023. So, uh, yeah, really proud to be here. A special year for you. We wish you all the best with it, John. Just moments away from the start of the first race of the Manx Grand Prix for this year. Let's have a look at the grid here. Dean Harrison. Dean, have you ever raced uh, a 500 single or a Manx Norton around the courses yet? Uh, no, this is the first time racing a 500 Manx. It's a bit of an honour, really, because obviously the Manx gets its name from the Manx. So to be here doing the Manx on a Manx is, uh, is quite good, to be honest. It's been going well through practice. I've just got everything crossed that uh, we get to the end of the race. It's fantastic to see a single cylinder out there against the Maldives. Wish you all the best, mate. Cheers, thank you very much. All right, we'll keep going down the grid. Like number five, third on the line, James Hillier, a rider we're used to seeing on the TT podium. 
James, a bike a little bit different to what you're used to riding around here. How's the uh, the 500 Yamaha going, and how are you feeling? Oh, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. We're not, we're not, I'm not on the fastest bike, but uh, I'll have a go, and you know, we won't be too quick, but uh, just try and get it to the end, and uh, I'll, I'll be smiling all the way through. I think so. Uh, it might be a bit frustrating when I get past a few places. You know, uh, I'm expecting to see Mike Brown pretty quick, but um, I, I don't know. It's, the sun's out can't moan it's an amazing course and uh, I, I just enjoy riding it so it's classic racing mate to finish first first you must finish so look forward to seeing you at the flag well, i hope so <laughs> cheers mate okay we move down now real exciting here mike brown very exciting rider so we've seen rode brilliantly at the tt this year had a lot of bad luck uh he's here on the peter lodge norton which is all the way from new zealand another single cylinder machine you're blindingly quick on this last year you've had a bit of a rough practice how are you feeling today um, yeah, look, should I say, rough practice, good race, but uh, it's been a very rough practice, so hopefully it'll be a very good race. It is such a unique bike, the 500 single, against the multi-cylinders that would generally be favourable to ride. You're really flying the flag for the, the British singles, and you're doing unbelievably well on it. What's it like to ride? Um, it vibrates. <laughs> That's about all I know. It's, um, look, it handles good, like, and, and you think they're classics, the lap times are down, but you ride them as hard as any other bike. It's, uh, it's good fun, to be fair. Mate, we're really looking forward to seeing what you can do out there today. Thank you. Just moments to go before the flag drops. Back to Grace. When we come back after the break, the 100th Manx Grand Prix will be underway. straight to our commentators Cam Donald and Dave Moore. Thank you Grace, let's have a quick look at the course courtesy of Cam Donald. The Isle of Man, Manx Grand Prix course, 37 three quarter miles of the most demanding closed public road conditions imaginable. This is brutal on modern machines, but you can't even understand how hard this must be on these older motorcycles based on bikes that were built in the 1960s. We've had a slight delay to the start, so the course conditions can improve following last night's heavy rainfall. Dean Harrison is already on his way. First bike on the road. Next, John McGuinness. So we're riding with McGuinness coming to the top of St. Ninians, the drop down to Bray Hill. Interesting the fact he's on a twin cylinder opposed to the other patterns which are single cylinders can. That's right, Dave. Maximum of 500 cc, but there's both single and twin cylinders. As we see Dean Harrison there aboard the sin single cylinder Manx, John McGuinness not far behind him on the twin cylinder pattern. And John McGuinness already catching Dean Harrison. They started 10 seconds apart. Dean Harrison already through Braddon Bridge, but so too is John McGuinness. So John McGuinness is putting the hammer down on this opening lap. Oh, look at the damp patches on the edge of the course. That'll be a challenge. There's no siding lap for these riders. This is on board with Mike Brown as he leaves Glencrutchy Road. Clutch is such uh, a vital part of these. Yep, you really need to use the clutch to get these bikes off the line because they're relatively low horsepower and very tall gearing. So this is on board with Mike Brown. Top of Sydney Indians, the drop down to Bray Hill. So, opening lap, Dean Harrison, first bike on the road, first bike to record a time as he goes through Glen Helen. Dave, look at that corner speed. They're pushing these little machines, those skinny tyres, so hard. John McGuinness is pushing already because I can tell you now, Cam, he's two seconds ahead of Dean Harrison. So McGuinness, two seconds ahead, only two bikes through so far. Here comes Mike Brown, Mike Brown, and he goes into third place. Mike Brown just under a second, eight tenths of a second behind Dean Harrison. So Mike Brown, we've already just three seconds covering these three as they go through. And they're the first three riders through, really. Three riders that we're used to seeing at the front of a TT field on modern bikes. But this is no parade lap, I assure you. These riders are masters of their craft. No matter that they're riding an older machine, they're still using all their skills and they want to win this race as much as any around this course. Here we are at Salby Bridge and McGuinness is still hunting down here, Dean Harrison. So McGuinness is continuing to close on him. Yeah, as a rider, that's so helpful when you can see that competitor ahead and you can use them almost like the 
the carrot being dangled. And we see here, that's what Mike Brown will be doing as he chases James Hillier. And passes James Hillier as they exit Balaf. James Hillier was sixth at Glen Helen. And he's still sixth by the looks of things at the moment. Coming into Solby, this is Mike Brown on the 500 Norton. And it's an incredible machine, this one, built by Peter Lodge in New Zealand. Peter has been developing that exact motorcycle for over 30 years. Wow, and it's going good guns at the moment. James Hillier aboard the 500 Yamaha, that's a twin still on the machine. And Rob Hodson as well. Rob Hodson is just inside the top 10 as things stand. Or he was. Here he comes. Breaking hard. Head up past Ginger Hall. We are along the Solby Strait, and Sean Anderson, fourth on the row, uh, fourth on the timing screen. Sorry, he was fourth at Balaf, and he is really close to Mike Brown in third place. Sean Anderson doing a brilliant job. He's been improving every year at the TT. Now, I think this was one of his first races on the pattern, and he's really taken to it with gusto. Dean Harrison, 2.7 seconds behind McGuinness at Ramsey. Now John McGuinness, he's chasing hard. Oh, lost the back tyre, left a bit of rubber there on the road. Now that's not from too much horsepower turning the rear tyre, it's just a high speed slide. We have a new race leader, Mike Brown leads. Eight tenths of a second ahead of McGuinness. So McGuinness back to second, Dean Harrison third, and Mike Brown leads. That is incredible. Now consider this bike, it's single cylinder. It's got considerably less horsepower than that twin. He should not be doing what he's doing out there. So three laps is the race distance. Dean Harrison goes through bungalow. Here comes John McGuinness. I wonder if he'll be getting boards telling him what's going on. I'm sure he will. Oh, it's just great to see these 500 Classics being pushed so hard, racing so, so close. All three riders leaving nothing on the table. That is a well-tuned 500cc Manx Norton at about 8,000 RPM. Dean Harrison has continued, but John McGuinness into the pits. That's right, Dave. The multi-cylinders have to do a compulsory pit stop. Put down, and this is to even out the class, if you like, and give those single-cylinder machines a little more of a chance. Dean Harrison, new lap record, 111.39 for the Classic Senior. In Dean Harrison's first ever single-cylinder race, he's never ridden a bike like this before. He's setting the lap record. Well, having taken the lead, Dean Harrison continues to pull away on the timing sheets ahead of Mike Brown. Adam McLean been holding a strong fifth place position aboard the Royal Enfield 500. Another well-known mark from the past. And here is Mike Brown and he is now 28 seconds behind Dean Harrison. Just sounded a little bit off tune there, Dave. I'm not sure if that bike is running as well as we're used to. John McGuinness still third, but Sean Anderson continues to close in. Can Sean Anderson snatch third place from John McGuinness? It's going to be a challenge, and as we see from that last shot, there's still plenty of damp patches that these riders are going to have to contend with. Through Solby goes. Mike Brown still in a strong second place. He's got a good 20-second advantage over John McGuinness. Well, there is Dean Harrison, the race leader, coming up onto the mountain, but Sean Anderson has gone third. Sean Anderson is in third place. He's ahead of John McGuinness. Oh, Dean Harrison, listen to that single. And now here, the much higher revving twin. We've got about almost 60 horsepower from the single cylinder machines, which is incredible. Closer to 75 horsepower on the bike. We see John riding there. I wonder if John knows he's in a battle for third with Sean Anderson. Here he goes across the tram lines. It's going to be tight. And here is Mike Brown still in that solid second place. You've got to make it to the finish, though. Yeah, you do. And you're pushing these old machines so, so hard. And it's incredible that these single cylinder machines, the corner speed they're carrying is just absolutely unbelievable. And this man as well is being absolutely unbelievable as well. He's in second place now ahead of Mike Brown. So Dean Harrison wins the Classic Senior. Question marks, though, about how they're going to finish on the podium. Will Mike Brown be second, third or fourth? Here comes McGuinness across the line. We've got to wait, though, of course, for Anderson and Brown. Oh, John, another strong ride. And in fact, Mike Brown takes third place ahead of Sean Anderson. What a finish. John McGuinness in second, but Dean Harrison, our race winner. First.
ever race on a 500 British single and a win and lap record to boot. Yeah, no, absolutely over the moon. The, the bike never missed a beat the whole race. The, uh, Ted and the, and the boys have worked flat out all the week. We've had an engine in and out of the thing, and, and I just went flat out from the starts fans. No, over the moon. It's so much fun riding around on these things around this course. It's, uh, it's absolutely brilliant. John, a solid second place for you there, but a really close race throughout. Yeah, I mean, it was it was mint. I mean, the conditions are lovely. I know it's like a bit of a demonstration race, but you definitely want to be running at the front. Not that I'm saying I could have beaten Dean. I've had to refuel on four life. Dean was riding fantastic. and uh, But massive thanks to Roger Winfield and his family and the boys who worked tirelessly. Uh, that was the second bike as well. I'm making excuses now, aren't I? That was actually the second bike that wasn't quite as good as the first bike because that went pop on the on Thursday night at Glenvine. So uh, we never rode that bike at all, so it was all new. So, yeah, I have to say, I wanted to win, but is what it is. <laughs> Our third place finisher, Mike Brown. Firstly, it started so well. You, you were out in the lead. You were looking so strong, and then the bike started to go off song. Yeah, she just wouldn't take revs after maybe three quarters of the way through the first lap. She just wouldn't take revs whatsoever. Just, just kept short shifting the whole way around. You were looking so good at the start. Did you feel comfortable? Yeah, I did, and I was confident, to be honest, going into the race, but um, just when I got a miss, I just said, this is a battle to finish now, and we just kept her going and got round. A fantastic win for Dean Harrison. When we come back after the break, there'll be more action from the 100th Manx Grand Prix. Welcome back to the Manx Grand Prix, celebrating its centenary year. For a hundred years, the Manx has been developing road racing stars of the future. And this tribute is to just a few of the legends who are made at the Manx. Today's lineup represents 15 riders who between them have won 27 world championships and 131 TT races, etching their place in motorcycle history and with it the role of the Manx Grand Prix in their respective careers. The big dustbin fairing, it's really like nothing I've ever ridden before, actually, so it's going to be an experience. This is a bike that I won the 1981 Senior on. The bike is quite iconic because it's a replica of a bike I used back in 79, a very important race because it was Mike Helmer's last race. riding around the Manx Grand Prix course is just unbelievable. But you know what? Some of the corners scare the out of you. Oh, I love that. Absolutely the best fun in the world riding in this place. That was absolutely incredible. Like, they're just a, a raw, such a raw machine, that, that period, that 1950s race bike, and could not have just sort of waves of thoughts going through my head of what it must have been like Bob McIntyre trying to, you know, setting that 100 mile an hour lap and what that bike has achieved around this course. And I thought, it felt like it still knew its way around the place, it really did. Incredible scenes here on the Isle of Man. Next up, it's the Junior Manx Grand Prix. Local rider Joe Yeardsley has been flying in practice and he's really starting to make a name for himself. Cam caught up with him earlier. Here with Joe Yeardsley, a local Manx competitor. Um, you've grown up around this race meeting. I believe your father won the Manx Newcomers in 81, the senior in 85, and then became a regular TT competitor. You've grown up around this event and now you're here yourself. Uh, how does that feel? Yeah, it's an amazing feeling. Motorbikes have always been a massive part of my life from the age of two, and uh, although I've only been actually road racing, this is coming to the end of my third season, living on the Isle of Man and watching on the hedges, you know, it's always been a massive part of my life. And my dad, God bless him, has always tried to keep me away from the roads, but living here and 
being that enthusiastic about the whole thing, I've always wanted to do it. And as you grow up and, and you get older, and I just wanted to go racing, but I knew the financial side of things of how expensive it is. And, you know, even if my mum and dad wanted me to do it and wanted to help me, they don't have the financial backing to, to do it right. And it took me to the age of 24 to luckily meet Nick from Spin Arena. That's how it all started, really. As a Manx local, you must have been on all the course, whether it be in cars, on bikes, I mean, you know it. How different has it been to actually ride the course at race speed? Yeah, obviously being, being a local, I think is definitely an advantage um, with knowing the roads, driving them on, the, on them every day to get to work and stuff like that. But once you get that helmet on for the first time and you actually go around and experience it, it's totally different. I've done lots of laps with Chris Palmer, who's been there for me from day one. Um, laps with Nick Jeffries. Um, Michael Dunlop actually took me for a lap on Tuesday, which was an amazing experience. And I've done loads of laps on my own, so I've done as much homework as I can to make it as easy as possible. But even though, you know, it still takes years to learn, and even Ian Locker says now at his age, you never stop learning this place. This year we celebrate 100 years of the Manx Grand Prix, and you're here making a race debut. How special is that to you? It's, it's, it's great, you know, it's, uh, like I said from the start, it's always been a childhood dream, but to do it in the centenary year, uh, makes it even more special. I'd just like to say thanks to all my sponsors that have, have supported me and got me here and thanks to the team for you know believing in me and yeah here we are and let's just give it 110% as I always do and look forward to the races. Thanks for your time Joe, really excited to see how you progress during race week and all the best with it. No, thank you very much. And Joe now lines up on number six for the start of the Junior Manx Grand Prix. So let's go to Cam and Dave Moore in the commentary box. So it's the Junior Manx Grand Prix for his next four laps the race distance. Four laps around the mountain course. These riders will face over 150 miles of racing in the Junior Manx. The first off then, it's Mark Colvin. This is the same dapper bet racing Kawasaki, which Josh Brooks rode to a maiden TT podium back in June. Next bike away, number two, Andrea Maiola. Andrea aboard a pattern, S1R, very popular machine in this class. Not just international bikes, uh, Cam, we also have international riders. We've got Spanish, and here goes Victor Lopez. Yes, another pattern, the team ILR. Oh, look at those RPMs, nudging 12,000. What about this? This guy has been sensational through practice and qualifying. Joe Yearsley, a newcomer. Another one on the ILR, so that's Ian Locker racing, a wealth of experience behind him. But not a lot of experience around the TT course for the young rookie. We're on board with Victor Lopez through the first time in point then at Glen Helen. Yeah, Victor Lopez was running very strong in this same race last year, had a DNF on lap two. Hopefully he can have a little more luck in this one. Here comes Dan Ingham into Glen Helen. It's a super twin race in effect, this, isn't it? It certainly is. He's aboard the Aprilia machines. They're all production-based machines. Joe Yardsley, wow. He'd made up a lot of ground on Dan Ingham there, and that's impressive. And Joe Yearsley is our early leader. Botolico goes into second place. Lopez is third. We're now back with Dan Ingham. Oh, Joe Yardsley flies through on his way into Hanley's. Now, of course, he's wearing the high-vis bib. That's usually for riders that are passing to know you're passing an inexperienced rider. Not the case with young Joe. The one thing is, though, Cam, he is a local, isn't he? he so he does know his way around here, but not at racing speed. Yeah, that is exactly the point. He's going around there today faster than he certainly ever has before. Here we are at Sorby Bridge. There goes Joe Yardsley, Dan Ingham looking for the toe. On this opening lap, Joe Yearsley continues to extend his lead. Look at that footage, Joe Yearsley flat on the tank like a painter coat. Dan Ingham behind him, airborne and crossed up on the RS660 Aprilia. So through the bungalow, Victor Lopez. He is still in a strong podium position in these early stages with, with Joe Yearsley, though, continuing to pull away. Oh, he looks so smooth and fast, Dave. A ball with Dan Ingham up into third place, though he's lost the toe to Joe Yearsley. Yeah, Dan, one of the favourites this year, very strong in last year's Manx GP. Whoa, Mark Colvin almost wearing Victor Lopez in the pits. 
So Joe Yeasley continues to lead, having broken the lap record on the opening lap for the junior Manx. And away we go down in pit lane. Breaking the lap record in your first ever race around the course. Incredible. Oh my goodness, what's going on here, Cam? Joe Yeardsley coasting to a stop. Heartbreaking for the young Manxman. What could have been? Oh, that is absolutely shocking for the young man. Andrea Maiola coming through, so that's all change on the leaderboard. Oh, Joe Yeardsley, he'll have a lot to reflect on. He's got another race in the senior, but that was really bad luck for the young lad showing so much form, but we certainly still have a race on our hands here, Dave. A race that is now led by Victor Lopez. He is around 10 seconds ahead of Botolico, and Maiola's also in there. As I said earlier, very continental feel to this one. What's that, two Spanish and an Italian? Wow. So Maiola through Bungalow. Now Maiola, he's an impressive rider. This is his third Manx Grand Prix, finished fourth last year. So he's looking at his first podium, Dave. And this man is looking at a Spanish win, not just his first win, but a win for a Spanish rider at the Isle of Man TT course. Would that be the first ever Spanish rider to win here, Dave? Certainly at the Manx Grand Prix. Here's Andrea Maiola providing the pictures into Quarter Bridge. I can only imagine the excitement. All three riders looking at the chance of their first ever podium. But we've seen what happened to Joe Yeardsley. It's not over till it's over. Here goes Maiola through Glen Helen. These production-based machines pushing out close to 100 horsepower at a highly tuned state. So we do get a lot of mechanical failures. I just wonder, I mean, Lopez, that gap to Maiola is coming down again. So Maiola is piling on the pressure. That deficit's been cut. And Botolico also in the picture. Incredible race cam. Yeah, it really is. We see them coming through this Glen Helen section. I must say, all riders look impressively smooth. Good line choice. Out of the gooseneck, back on the revs for this superb climb. And uh, here comes Victor Lopez in the sunshine. Sun shining, big crowd, flies on the screen. And a podium on the cards. A beautiful, beautiful shot. Where is, oh, here he is, here is Lopez. So he's in two, he's just got to come up on the Glen Crunchy oh, Road now. Lack of adhesion flag, last lap, crossing those damn patches out of the nook. Oh, it's all looking good though for Victor Lopez. This is history in the making, folks. We're witnessing it again at the Manx Grand Prix. Victor Lopez, a victory for him and victory for Spain. And look at that, two Italians and a Spanish rider on the podium. Mark Colvin just missing out in fourth. But Botolico, Maiola and Lopez, the top three. A brilliant junior Manx GP. Congratulations, Victor Lopez. You put it on the top step. How hard did you have to push in that race on the last lap? Well, the third lap, I see that uh, small gap. So I say, oh, you, you have to push. And I speaking to myself under the helmet. You can, you can believe in yourself. Well, big, big, big effort. I'm really, really happy. It's, you know, it's the Dial of Man, the great track of the world. And be, be here is amazing, really amazing. Andrea Maiola, your third Manx Grand Prix, fourth last year, this year on the podium. How does it feel? Ah, it's, it's a dream. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dream. It's a perfect day. The bike is perfect. My team is perfect. My mechanic is perfect. My team for pit stop is perfect, all perfect, all perfect. Brilliant job, congratulations. Thank you so much, mate. Maurizio Botolico, you've put it on the podium at only your second time here. How are you feeling right now? Uh, incredible. I, I'm very happy. <laughs> that next year on the suite, I'm very happy. <laughs> Go and enjoy. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. A fantastic race and an emotional podium for the Junior Manx Grand Prix. When we come back after the break, there'll be one more race to go. See you shortly.
Welcome back to the Isle of Man and the Manx Grand Prix, celebrating its 100th year. It's approaching evening and time for the final race of the day, the short, lightweight Manx Grand Prix. For those beautiful two-stroke 250cc Exotica, 400cc four strokes and the more modern Moto3 machinery. Cam's on the grid now with those bikes and their riders. We're just up on the grid here, only moments away from the start of the lightweight Manx Grand Prix. And we've got rider Mike Brown. He's about to pull out a very special surprise for his team boss, Eddie Laycock, a replica helmet of Eddie's. Very special moment. Eddie, we've got to ask you, how special is that? Don't know what to say. Amazing. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Incredible. They kept that really quiet. It's a beautiful tribute. You put a lot into the sport. Living legend yourself, two times TT winner, Grand Prix racer. You won everywhere, mate. Now you're putting so much back in. It's uh, it's great to see you here. Yeah, I know. I'm, I've lost for words actually looking at that. It's amazing, incredible. No, just let's hope that everyone gets home safe and we all have a good race, but I'm blown away. Brilliant. We'll top it off with a race result. Fantastic. Cheers, Eddie. Fantastic. Mike, you haven't had much luck so far. We know how strong you are in this class. I think it's time the luck turns. Yeah, look, I, I'm hoping so. Look, we, we've only got a lap in, and um, they're just a hard bike to ride, so a little bit of practice would have been nice. But look, beggars can't be choosers now. We'll just get going and see how we get on. We know what you're capable of, mate. All the best. Thank you. OK, we're just going to jump down the grid here. We'll just say a very quick word to Michael. He's here on the grid before he gets the helmet on. It's just boys are actually just checking the weather. Of course, these 250 two-stroke machines are quite temperamental, very affected by changing conditions. So just having a last look at the weather. Michael, before you go, are you ready for it? Yeah, yeah. See, the weather's changing, so we just have to see they're changing. It's just getting cold, but that's the way it is. So. We know how much you enjoy riding these bikes. Conditions are good for tonight. Yeah, it's been a long time since I rode them, obviously, but uh, obviously it shoots the smaller boys a lot better, but we'll have our own. We'll see what happens. All the best, mate. Bikes and riders are ready. We're about to go racing. Throw back to Grace. So as Cam dashes to the commentary box, it's time to get rolling with the short, lightweight Manx Grand Prix. It's incredible that 40 years ago, this man was alongside Robert Dunlop and Steve Hislop on the podium at the newcomer's Manx, and here he is, Ian Locker, in the lightweight. And still very fast. But Ian Locker on his way. And again, the Laylaw, the machines, Adam McLean and Mike Brown. There's Mike Brown. Oh, the seagull there just getting out of the way in a hurry. Here's Michael Dunlop, of course. He is going to be a threat he every time he races. Has to be the favourite in this race, Dave. He's been so strong in every practice session on these 250 GP machines. Oh, that's a great start, but here is Dunlop on the back wheel over Agos Leaf. He means business. Yeah, all these riders on Yamahas, and that was Dan Sale on the black RS250 Honda. Here's Locker then. How many times has he gone through here in the, an illustrious career? We thought he's been retired, but he refuses to let it go. But Mike Brown's gone through. Brown and Locker at a quick pace. Paul Jordan. That's Paul Jordan. Oh. That's bad luck. He only made it to the bottom of Bray Hill, and the race on that 450 is over. What a shame. And you can see the disappointment as he pulls over onto Selborne Drive. Adam McLean being caught by Dan Sale. Yeah, Dan. That's around the outside. Honda passes Yamaha. Well, what a place to pass. Well, Dan certainly knows his way around here. We're normally accustomed to seeing him in previous years. Extremely successful sidecar passenger. Retired from sidecars, but he's really got a soft spot for these 250 GP machines. Ian Locker doesn't know the meaning of the word retired, and already, my goodness me, he's been passed by his teammate, Mike Brown. Yeah, Mike's not messing around here. It turns out afterwards he had a little bit of a mechanical hiccup in that senior race on the single-cylinder classic. He'll want to make amends now in this lightweight Manx Grand Prix. He's 10 seconds and a bit ahead of Ian Locker. These two are setting the pace. They are topping the leaderboard. It's Mike Brown who leads. Ian Locker is in second place. Dave, these are thoroughbred. 250cc twin cylinder two-stroke racing machines. These are basically what Moto2 was up until 2010. 
Dan Sale still holding third place, but we are looking at Mike Brown and Ian Locker, the top two in the leaderboard as they make their way up the mountain. Stuart Hall going strong at Solby. Yeah, Stuart was very strong in this class last year, Dave. Not going quite as well in today's race. Brown and Locker through the mist. Oh, you see the weather's starting to come in. Now, this race has run late today. Organisers have done a great job of fitting this schedule in, but this race is late. There is Dan Sale. He's certainly not late. Mandatory pit stops then. Here they come, Brown and Locker. Of course, these pure racing machines, they don't have pit lane speed limiters. Got to take a lot of caution. They don't exceed 60 kilometres per hour. So they have to come in. It's three lap race. They have to come in at the end of lap one. Are we doing? Flying, so it sounds good. Everything sounds positive. Mechanics let him know that he is flying. So down they go. Oh, back. He's not flying now. The bike won't start. He's in the lead, but the bike won't start. The mechanic is pushing it all the way out onto the road, and it's finally fired. Drama indeed. Locker ahead of him, so that lead is well. It's been. It's still there for Mike Brown, but uh, certainly Locker's bit a big chunk out of it. And there is Brown. Yeah, he'll have the head down now, wanting to chase his teammate back. Here's Dan Sale. He's on his way too. So we're riding with Ian Locker still in the Oh, Mike place. Brown. Up over Crosby Leap. He's wasted no time in closing that gap. Sean Anderson on the Kramer Evo 2. We've had some retirements. Cam Paul, Jordan, Gareth Arnold, Jonathan Perry, Adrian Skates, and of course, Michael Dunlop, a retirement. Without doubt, our race favourite has pulled out. That's really bad luck for Michael. He was definitely the favourite after the speed he showed in practice. And this is the speed being shown by Mike Brown as that miss continues to drop. There may be. We might do well to get three laps out of this one, Cam. Well, I tell you what, these machines are very sensitive to changing conditions, and the conditions look like they are cooling, so that could have an effect on the performance of these bikes. Stuart Hall has dropped out of the top five. We're riding with Mike Brown coming out of Glen Crunchy Road and they've decided to shorten it, uh, Cameron. This is going to be the chequered flag and there it is. Mike Brown, a sensational victory after all his bad luck. He finally got the result he deserved. Ian Locker in second with Dan Sale also on the podium in third. Our lightweight Manx Grand Prix winner, Mike Brown. Brilliant, the luck turned and uh, I think you well and truly deserve that victory. Yeah, should saying goes, bad practice, good race, isn't it? But uh, we had a very bad practice and we got a good race, so can't complain. The cloud was coming down and there was even a bit of, of all my tear-offs actually gone because the mist was getting between them and I kind of guessed I said they could pull this on this lap. So, um, look, just delighted for the team after such, like, they've had two endless nights trying to get that bike to go and eventually in the last minute, like, they found a problem and, and, and was just glad to pay it off to them. Congratulations, second place Ian Locker, a really great result for you and the team. Yeah, it was great, you know, it's nice for the team um, uh, to get a 1-2 again. Uh, I enjoyed it, you know, but um, it was nice to got the full three laps, but, you know, you could, I could see the fog coming down, I thought they might stop it, but uh, and I could see the people waving in the last lap, so I knew it was going to happen, you know, but, uh, yeah, no, I enjoyed it, and like I say, um, you know, we'll uh, think about the future. A really good result once again for the Laylor Racing Team in the lightweight Max Grand Prix there, Cam. Absolutely, and testament to the organisers for getting through the schedule today. Three brilliant races. Mm. And what's been your highlight? Because we've had a jam-packed day of racing. We certainly have, but I'd have to say for me, the Junior Manx Grand Prix. What an incredibly close race. Heartbreaking for local up-and-comer Joe Yeardsley. He was leading 10 seconds plus on the first lap, then had a mechanical issue. And then we ended up with an all-international podium. It was so tight, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's certainly been exciting racing. And the best thing is we've still got two more races to come. So join us back here for the 100th Manx Grand Prix tomorrow.